salt with a crocodile all through here. We have to go across, bro. Well, I haven't been this nervous in a long time. Well, this didn't go to plan. <laughs> this place is wild. That's the size that lets you know you're alive. This is insane. This is one adventure I've dreamed up for the last 10 years. The fishing trip of a lifetime. We're gonna venture into some very remote parts of Cape York. If you go down, you lose your car. It's pretty simple out here. Nah. But out here, we're a long way from home, hundreds of kilometers from help. If it was easy, everyone would be doing this. This is loose. And the tides can swallow a vehicle in a matter of minutes. See how much has come up? Yeah. We crossed just there. Where do we cross? Our Cape York adventure is kicking off back at my place in southeast Queensland. And I've got to say, Sammy and I are so keen for this one. In fact, that's probably the understatement of the year. Where we're planning on going, I haven't visited for over 10 years. And now everything's sort of falling into place. We've got the rigs packed. It really is time to hit the road. We are driving flat strap until we get to the top end. In fact, if you look down here, it's 2,692 kilometers. We're gonna have to burn some miles because the plan is to get there in a couple of days. Our route north is no small drive and with only eight days to drive as well as fish, we're gonna waste no time on trucking up north. With 1,200 kilometers under our belt for day one, it's a quick overnighter at a local watering hole in Bellanio and a few easy wins against Sammy at pool. That's a great shot. Some of us call that a strategy, others would call that losing the game. Hun River really is the start of Cape York, and with another 1,000 kilometre day done and dusted, it's a perfect spot to catch up with our good mates, Rob and Renee. Our adventure officially begins now. We're about to hit the dirt just north of Han. Goodbye, sweet, sweet, shiny boat. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, we're on the red dirt. Now, if you don't mind me saying, I reckon this convoy looks pretty darn good. We've got the 200 series up front with the Can-Am side-by-side -side on the back. Behind that, we've got big soot, tow and a tinny. So we have all the toys. We've done a couple of little mods to make sure that we can tow nice and safe. We've got the rock tamers on the back now. There's a lot of rocks, especially late season. These roads haven't been graded that well. Rocks are flying up everywhere. Of course, the rock tamers do stop those rocks from hitting your trailer. It's the other thing you'll notice is both vehicles have the clear view mirrors. You can see what's going on the whole time. A couple of times, uh, the straps have actually come loose on the can air. Now, I can see straight away with good vision that I need to pull over and check those things out. But we're taking it pretty easy, and so far, it's all going well. The location we're aiming to reach is a remote spot that's miles from anywhere. And at this stage, we're not even sure if we're gonna be able to make it. Here we go, I think this is the GPS marker being given. We will sidetrack off the main road. It's starting to get a lot tighter through here and the driving's gonna be a lot harder. Between us and our fishing location is over 60 kilometers of very slow, tight, and really rough corrugated dirt roads. Oh my goodness. Uh... Adding to the extra stress of the trip, this is Sammy's first time taking his pride and joy off the tarmac. Right, we're cruising down some tracks now. It's starting to get pretty tight, and these sort of trees that hang over the sides, they may not look like much, but they're pointy as, and when you've got a beautiful colour like this, all it takes is one to go straight through it. So it yeah. takes two minutes to take it off, chuck it in the middle of the boat, and save yourself the drama. If you think that's uh, tough on the boat cover, try it taking a 200 series first through. But you know what? Worth it. Making memories. Track is pretty washed out. Nothing too extreme, but very slow going. I had the big 200 flexed up like this for a while. Yeah, good luck with that one, Sammy. I reckon um, old Sooty in the boat trailer, they'll do all right through that. He's hoping, it's built for it, both of them. So here we go. Look at her, she's flexing away through like a champion. Sure, no, mate. I'm going to have to be careful here. Uh, I'm going to keep going like this. I might turn into a full driver. Mate, if you ask me, it's a step up in my books, mate. You're doing real well. It's one thing to navigate the trailers through these tight tracks, but it's another to keep the Can-Am on the trailer. We're trying to make the coast in good time, but keep breaking straps. 
Right, it's going to use this winch this time to just pull the can am over. We're actually going to get it off the trailer. We're getting close enough down to the coast now. We're going to get it straight off. And then our cameraman is going to drive this one in front of the 200. We don't want to break any more ratchet straps. So it's going to be a lot easier for everyone. With the can am off the trailer and the day getting on, hopefully we can cover ground a little bit quicker. Eight, nine, nine kilometers an hour at the moment. 10, 10, we'll hit a bit of a speed record. 11, log out, we're on the straight now. The coastline we're heading to is dominated by the tides and it's taking us a lot longer to reach than we first thought. Just a little bit of a life update for you. We've been on this track for five hours. It's only 60 k's long. But it is slow. We'll get there. We'll get there. Finally, after a huge day of pushing, we're drawing closer to the coastline. <laughs> have a look at this. I can see the water. Can't wait to drive on the beach and not have little shrubs just running down the side of my paintwork. <laughs> be so nice. I just can't wait to go 40 k's an hour and above. Oh, there's a bit of sand here. Might need to give it a bit. Mate, that's very soft. Oh, here we go. Here we go, down onto the beach, mate. The sand is so soft on this beach, we nearly got bogged going downhill. And speaking of getting bogged. Oh, no choice in that. It's good, good a spot as any to let the tires down, I think. Let's get those pressures right down. Big, heavy vehicle. Can't go as low as sooty, but yeah, it's a 30 at the moment, probably get down 20. That's a lot nicer. <laughs> That's a lot better. I'm sure he's going to air down the can am. It's all happening now. Here comes Soot. Easy. Yeah, Sooty loves that. Well, no, we've got to act quick at the moment because I want to check. There's a, a tidal creek that we potentially want to cross. Hey, this beach looks pretty much like I expect the surface of the moon to look like. It's a wild place, mate, a very wild place. Been on it for two seconds, already seen a pig run away. Half expecting to see a croc. Oh yeah, you'll see crocs for sure. This place is full of crocs. I mean, absolutely chockers. You gotta really watch around here. They actually have quicksand. That stuff is just a nightmare. If you get stuck in that, it's nearly goodbye vehicle. Oh, I don't mind if we keep a little bit of a gap, just in case. You know, I don't wanna go down, we both go down, then we're in big, big trouble. To finally reach the coastline is a huge feat on its own, but we're not there yet. Just south of us is a huge river mouth that we're hoping to actually cross. The east coast of Cape York is renowned for its wild and windy conditions, and on the opposite side of the river is a perfectly sheltered area where we can set up a base camp for the week. Not only will reaching the other side open up that perfect camp, but it'll also allow access to some uncharted river systems to the south. With the tide now coming in and the risk of bogging vehicles, we're packing the rigs and got to check out the crossing in the Can-Am. I wish we were here about an hour earlier. You gotta be careful when you cross these because if you go down, you lose your car. It's pretty simple out here. That's where I want to camp, over there in that, that corner. Oh, on the lee side. Yeah. The problem is, it looks really shallow. I'd love to walk it, but there's no way on earth I'd do that right now. Way too dangerous. Of course, saltwater crocodiles all through here. In fact, some of the biggest ones I've ever seen in my life is on the east coast of Cape York. It's actually given me a lot of hope because it does look shallow enough to cross even at a 1.2 metre tide, which is what we've got right now, which is the high-low. So tomorrow morning, it'll be lower again, which means we can get over. But the problem is the tides get bigger as the week progresses. So. We still should be able to, by Wednesday, Thursday, in a few days' time, be able to cross back again. So that's the main thing, making sure we can come back. By definition. With a little more confidence on doing the crossing on tomorrow's low, we're going to set up a quick camp and try and get a few hours sleep. Tonight I'll cook up some burgers, hopefully, just hopefully, that fish is on the menu real soon because it'd be a real shame to come this far. It's <laughs> so a long way for a donut. It really is. I reckon we get this in us, mate, maybe have a couple of beers, and we need to get up really early tomorrow because we want to go down and have a look at that low tide and see if we can't get through. Up to 30% off a massive range of parts at 4drive247.com 
right now. Things like castro oils, OEX, starter motors, alternators, drive tech 4x4 bearing kits, swivel hub rebuild kits, Ryko filter service kits, Bendix brakes, even up to 30% off clutch industries gear and 10% off uni clutches as well. So if you need to give your four-wheel drive some TLC like I need to do to this old girl behind me, jump on it quick and don't miss out at 4 247com It's just after four in the morning. Um, after about five hours sleep, we are packing up frantically at the moment. You reckon, Sammy? You <laughs> came? Yep, love doing it. The croc stuff at night. It yeah. adds a little element of surprise. It really does. It really does. Don't really have a choice, so got to do it. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. But this is the adventure we live for. Mm. Right oh, time to go. Early morning starts for a fishing trip is nothing strange for Sammy and I. However, when it's time to cross something as crazy as we're about to, the feeling is a little bit different. On one hand, we're really excited about the possibilities that lie on the other side of this creek. And on the other hand, what we're about to do comes with a lot of risks. The time is 5.04, we've got a 5.08 low tide, which is, timing's pretty good, but we still have a bit of work to do before we can cross. Just looks like a river mouth. Just gonna get it out and have a quick look. We've spent the last 45 minutes in the dark going up and down this river mouth to try and find the best place to cross. This area is really known for its quicksand, and you get the wrong line, and you've got the potential to lose a vehicle for good. Yeah, it's a bit soft out there. It's a bit, a bit soft. <laughs> a, it is a bit soft. Um, it's shallower here, there's no doubt about it, but there's a little bit of a bank, Sam, you notice on the other side, and that usually indicates a bit deeper water, but as you started walking through, your feet start to sink a bit, and you know, I'm not that heavy. That's four tonne of vehicle plus a trailer. You've got the boat on the back and all the rest yeah. of it. I'd rather go through a little bit deeper water and just have that certainty that I'm probably not gonna go down. It's the kind of ordeal you don't wanna deal with at night. Here, yeah. here, here's a plan. I'm gonna go back up there, put the spotties straight down over the water so we can see as best we can. Then I'm gonna jump in the quad with you. We're both gonna drive over and then back. There's a lot going on. While we're pretty confident we've found the best place to cross, anything can happen We actually put a four-wheel drive in some soft sand at the front of a river mouth. So as you can imagine, this is heart in mouth sort of stuff. If we get this yeah. one wrong, well this could be the end of our Cape York trip right here. Well, that answers that question. I, I, I idled through that, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't give it anything. This is obviously a very lightweight vehicle. That's not even touching over the, the hubs of the cam, is it? Can am. No. A little bit in the, in the footwell here. That's a bit deeper. It was a success-ish. So far. So far. This we, part. We got, we got one third of our convoy across, then we brought it back over, so. <laughs> I've never been so alert after four hours sleep or five hours sleep. Yeah, you think your coffee wakes you up in the morning? Try, <laughs> try this. Heaps more effective. But I'm just visualizing success here, because, uh, I well, probably don't need to remind people, but last time I drove through water on this show, it didn't end as well as you would hope. Again, sorry Pete, and uh, yeah, we sunk a car on Morton, but that's all right, this is heaps more remote. This time you're in a Toyota, mate. You, I'm not gonna say you can't go wrong, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, dead set, come down here, because that's the deep part. I'm just gonna come from there and just go straight that way. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> this is loose. Okay. The guinea pig's going across, big soot. This will be the big test because we got the boat. I am a little bit nervous. This is by far nowhere near as extreme as some of the water crossings these lads do, but when you've got a boat trailer to weigh you down, it's salt water, there's crocs, it's night time, the sand's moving, it all just adds up. Just want everything to go smoothly. Oh, well, I haven't been this nervous in a long time. I'm not even driving. Sammy's driving my other front, Joey. With a boat on the back. That's the line. You go for it when you're ready, mate. Just, I reckon, just straight across. Have a go, have a go. Come on, so it. Yeah, a bit more momentum, a bit more. That's it, that's it. There, those melon holes. Hang on to it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, that is a big bit of relief. Yes. Yes. 
Is that me? I'm gonna give you a hug, mate. It's so good to do a water crossing on four-wheel drive 24-7 and not need a recovery. Oh, he's already across. <laughs> yeah, I thought I wouldn't hang around. Oh, this is good. This is a feel good story from the boys. <laughs> what a start to the morning. Yes, we made it. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We've been so excited about crossing this water crossing. We haven't even mentioned fishing. And now we're over here, guess what we get to do? Go back to bed, because it's like 4.30 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Catch a bass first, I reckon. To have all the vehicles on the opposite side of the river mouth feels like a massive achievement. With all the rigs across, we have now opened up access to our base camp for the next few days. I've been dreaming of being in this exact spot for over 10 years now. To say I'm excited for what lays ahead is a complete understatement. Every now and again, you just need to stop and just pinch yourself because this is absolutely amazing. What we've just undertaken, at a water crossing in the dark. You've got to risk it for the biscuit. And that's what we've done today. And we've come up trumps and I'm really, really stoked because we've got a campsite that's out of the wind a little bit. It's, it's protected from that southeasterly. And the really cool thing, this opens up so much opportunity for adventure. So the plan now, as much as it'd be nice to go for a fish, Sammy's, he, it'd be hard pressed getting him away from that water. But we're gonna make a base camp up. I wanna set that up properly, put a bit of time into it and get the solar out as well, because we're gonna be relying on solar heavily because we're gonna be here for a few days. The vehicles aren't gonna get turned on and we've got all of our needs of 12 volt. Plus of course, we have camera uh, equipment to charge as well. So we need that solar pumping. Then I think we'll jump on the Can-Am and go for a bit of an explore on that low tide and see what's up around there. And uh, then we'll come back we'll have enough tide to hopefully put the boat back in the water and there's the afternoon you join the dots with a little too much excitement we couldn't help but cast a quick line and you wouldn't read about it but second cast in i've hooked a little barra and the good news is it's before sammy as well second cast on this side of the bank about 10 meters from camp wow barramundi tick they get bigger than that though, they get a lot bigger. Hold your rod, because I want to catch on. If you wanted an indication of what the fishing is going to be like, well, this is just the beginning. With our base camp set up and the Can-Am loaded, it's time to explore further afield. To be able to jump in the side-by-side -side and cruise down to the next creek system is a massive luxury, and we're not used to it. I just forgot one thing, which is um, a little bit of an oversight. We've got everything, we've got sat phones, we've got all sorts of stuff, max tracks. If we get stuck 20 kilometers away from camp, we're going to be in strife. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> to gain access to this very special part of the country, we got permission from the traditional owners. And I'd like to thank the Gudang, Yadhei Kainu, and the Seven Rivers Nations, and of course, Alex Waimara from Back to the Bush for all their help. If you're planning on exploring areas like this in Australia, make sure you go through the right channels to gain the correct access. It's not long until we spotted our first croc. It's a timely reminder that you can't be too complacent up here. We're a very long way from help if anything was to go wrong. Just through here. <laughs> have to be super careful of this tide turning because if it gets too deep, we can't get back through the quad. We're stuck here, we don't want that. I don't want to go near the water's edge. I'm a little bit spooked. I just had a barra buff the lure three times. Really? Yep. Keen to be my first. It's what we call the uh, Sean Whale snake. <laughs> oh, fish on. <laughs> there he is. What? That's a mangrove jack. There we go, Sean's on. That's a beautiful little mangrove jack. It's only the start of our little mission. How good is that? <laughs> they hit so hard too. It's really good for you, Mark. Oh, how do you not take him for tea? Oh my goodness. You're kidding. It's fast and furious action. That is a beautiful finger mark. If you're, we will be eating fish, there's no doubt about it. That would be one of the best fish you could eat out of this system. These are mangrove jack, they don't get much better. And that size, just on the cast on the flats. <laughs> well, we're both on the board after two casts. Something tells me we're gonna be in for a bloody good day. One thing about these little creeks, eh? As soon as one of them uh, has a go. It seems like they all just fire up. That's oh, it's another jack! That's no, another jack. I don't think you could be so lucky. Oh, it's a nice jack too, really nice jack. Oh my goodness. 
How is there so many fish here? We've just been casting the same spot. Nice one, mate. That's a beautiful mangrove jack. A quick photo and then back he goes. We've just thrown away a barra, a good finger mark and two good jacks. Hope we can actually deliver when we need to eat. Now the problem is we don't have any ice with us, we've got no refrigeration out here, so we don't want to keep fish unless we want to eat them. Could lead to the all-time big stitch-ups, but it could, it really could. Oh, oh well, you're getting rinsed. Big one. Oh, big cod, good. <laughs> the cod master. The specialist. Whoa, look at that. That crab just came straight out of this little cod's mouth. Yeah, look at look at that. That's what they can eat a big lure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Certainly having a go. Oh, have a go at this for a cod. Oh yeah, good cod. Just a couple of cod wranglers this morning. Have a go at that. You wouldn't want to be a bait fish out here. Just absolutely scoffed it. All right, let's go get this cod. It's a shame. I want to sit here for another hour, but the fishing's only going to improve as the tide comes in too. As that bait sort of starts to move through the system, there'll be buffs, there'll be bazzers cruising around. All the fun stuff. Let's go find another Onwards one. and upwards. We're two kids in a candy shop right now and absolutely loving this. But we've totally lost track of the time and the tide is just starting to push in. And out here in the flats, they flood really quickly on a tide change. What was a four metre crossing 20 minutes ago, is now 100 metres long. That's what I mean, see how it just come up? Yeah. The big cross is there. With all of the dry ground now getting claimed by the tide, and the solely crocodile we spotted just 20 minutes prior, we've got no choice in waiting out the tide. We have to cross this whole river though at some stage. Where do we cross? We cross yeah. Are we going to get across now? I hope so, we're going to stay in. Where's that, where's that track? I can't see them. Just, just, uh, just here, here, just here. You can see them through there. It's really deep. Bit, yeah, that's. We have to go across, bro. What about over yeah, here? Up here, up here. It's a bit longer up there. Don't just everyone look. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Not right. Race back to camp. Should we get across this next one? Because that's underwater now as well. With the tide now racing in, you can see just how wide that river mouth is. This is the crossing we did this morning in the dark, and it's not hard to imagine how easy it would be to lose your vehicle if it did go down and the tide started rushing in. The quad was parked just over there just before. Now, this is a proper river, and it's only been half an hour. Wow, that tide came up so fast. It's just a good reminder out here. What was a big open sand flat was deep full of water. And then of course there was the little channels that we crossed were now had another 30 mil at least on them. And it actually got a bit scary there for a minute. Luckily in the Can-Am it's got the rear locker and I was driving through in high range, hit that rear locker and it was bogging down and it just, thank goodness, went and I checked the airbox, everything's good, we've got no water anywhere, but that is gonna serve as a really good reminder, you can't muck around out here. Sometimes it's so easy to get excited about the fishing and for good reason too, but you can't, you can't be too relaxed out here, you've really gotta keep your wits about you. Well, that was a scary moment, but we're getting straight back on the horse and casting a line down on the beach. Oh! That sounded pretty epic. It's a good fish, but he's running me down. The... Oh, he's way out the back there. Oh, oh, see him? Yep. Oh, I'm getting eaten by a shark. Actually, not yet. Yeah. Oh, a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, hang on, hang on. A lot of action. This stuff always happens like this. <laughs> that was all, all the fuss was about. That's a little giant trevally. He's crunched that little surface popper. He got in this current and just cruised off down there and then all the action unfolded. I had a shark that's docked his tail, had a cast over, hung him up in a tree. We'll either eat him or use him as crab bait. He won't go to waste, that's for sure. It's not even lunchtime, we're about to put the boat in the water and explore this creek system. That'll be pretty fun. Can't wait to do that. After all those corrugations, pretty well everything working in the boat. 
Makes you very nervous when you turn it on for the first time, but we can trim and tilt. All right. How's this? The boat's not even in the water yet. We've got another double hookup. This place is insane. Unbelievable. We're just trying to launch the boat. We don't even need to launch it. This place is wild. Well, let's try this again. <laughs> the local boat ramp here goes all right. Straight out of camp and the boat is in. We are on the boat. How good's that? How good's that? We wouldn't mind, obviously, some fish for dinner, but we've got plenty of time to do that. For now, I reckon to get some crab pots in. That'd be really cool to have some muddies out here. Crabbing. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing the crabs. <laughs> This river system is teeming with life, but what we're after is barramundi. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> what we saw on the side scan. Yeah, that's all of them. Old school. First fish on the boat. Well, Sammy got a queenie and he didn't... The boat uh, wasn't in the water. But technically, he didn't put the boat in the water. Oh, yes, yes, barra. Oh, yeah, oh. that is a barra. My first Cape York barra. I'm pretty happy about that, if you can't tell. Just a little jack, mate. Oh, yeah, just a little jack. Jack and a barra for dinner? Okay. <laughs> Freshly caught fish just hours before dinner. It doesn't get much better than that. We got one. Yeah, good one. Like a really good one. Wasn't expecting that, that was not in for long. That happened quick, <laughs> happened real quick. That's pretty cool, we've had the pots in for probably about an hour and a half, maybe two, and nice big buck. And you can tell a male, because they've got the skinny little part on their carapace. What a day, we've caught mangrove jack, barra, cod, queenies, mud crab, finger mark, and plenty of other species all within the first 12 hours. This trip is shaping up to be a trip of a lifetime. We're going to be recovering the boat at nearing low tide, which means we have to use the extended drawbar. Hopefully it all works. The sand here is really super soft, and with the tide now out, it's proving a little more tricky to recover the boat. In remote locations like this, you really do need to be prepared with the right gear. After a few max tracks under soot and a bit of right boot, we've managed to get the boat out. Yes, easy done. It doesn't get much fresher than that. With fish on the menu tonight, Sammy's wasting no time in taking a couple of fillets off that mangrove jack and barra. Just at the Cape York filleting station. Uh, Jacks and barra on the menu. To be sitting back on a very remote beach in Cape York with a cold beer in hand after the day we've just had, well, someone needs to pinch me. This really is living. Well, what an epic day this has been. I mean, you gotta chalk this one down as one of the most epic adventures, or at least I've ever been on. Tonight, I'm gonna cook up a bit of fish, believe it or not. We've got some barramundi and some mangrove jack. This little recipe I'm about to show you now is gonna be one of the best beer batters you'll ever do. And I'm just gonna make basically some fish and chips. Righto, there's some plain flour. Little sprinkle of baking powder in there. This one here is a bit of rice flour. Now this will make it nice and thin and ultra crispy as well. Just a little bit of this stuff. The next ingredient, of course, is a cold beer. Now yeah, I've got to say, after an epic day of adventure, it doesn't get much better than this, eh? You always got to take the first sip. Now you can't, you can't just pour a fresh one in. Now the whole plan here is you basically want to get the consistency just right. Holy heck. They are thirsty batters. That is looking absolutely spectacular. Now, gotta chuck it straight in the Dometic, get that nice and chilled. Well, here's the fish. How good is that? Fresh fish caught straight out of our backyard. Doesn't get much better. So I'm just gonna cut these into little pieces. Well, that's actually a fair bit of barramundi. That'll probably do us. I reckon the mangrove jack, those two little fillets, we might even keep those for breakfast. Something tells me we're gonna be on a bit of a fish diet. I'm gonna grab some oil and get this one on the go. We wanna get oil nice and hot. Now, we want to coat all that fish in the batter. Now, here's the quick way. You notice I didn't chuck this out. This goes all back into that bag. Now, the batter we just made, guess what? 
goes over the fish. And this is why I reckon these Ziploc bags come in so handy. Look at that. What have you done to my fish? <laughs> Your fish? Well, that's my barra. Oh, well, I fill, and I filleted. The, the, jack, the jack's inside. Now, when you're in the bush, mate, convenience is everything. Now, what you want to do is get these little pieces that have all batted up and just whack them straight in. And um, at the same time, if Sammy, if you could, see those potatoes there? Probably need to cut them. The sizzle's good. Had a few castaways, but we'll live. <laughs> Look at that. You can smell it. It smells so good. This is, this is living, mate. All right, Barra is done. Yeah, turn that right down, mate. I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa! Wow! We've got fireworks. How good is this? <laughs> I'm just gonna move this over. That is dinner. Well, mate, I reckon no need for place tonight. We'll just simply eat off the table. We've got fish and chips in one of the best locations on earth. Look at this. It's absolutely Cheers. sensational. Cheers, buddy. How good. With our alarm set super early again, Sammy and I aren't wanting to waste any fishing time. The plan this morning is to jump in the Can-Am and um, do a little bit of exploring again, come back, put the boat in, we need to check those crab pots we chucked in yesterday, and also, ideally, if we can try and get the tinny up to another creek system, that would be pretty cool too. And hopefully we don't get caught out by the tides again. Oh, there's a couple. Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. <laughs> that's the size that lets you know you're alive. It's just madness, chucking little surface lures on the same gear that we're catching barra in the creeks, we're catching fish like this. Real good fun. <laughs> oh. He's going crazy. You just hook up again. I'm stealing your lures. I tell you what, Cape York, you've got to get here. This is my first trip. I'm hooked for life. I'll be back for sure. We will get one. Look, sometimes when someone gets lucky, the other person likes to give them a bit of space. And today was my day. Sean's still searching for number one, but look, he'll get it. He's a persistent guy. He'll get it. Just might take a bit of time. Get going. Cannot. Sammy might have caught all the queenies today, and for some reason, I couldn't catch one, but let's not forget who caught the most barra so far. <laughs> we just decided to come in for a quick bite to eat before we jump back out in the boat, and I thought I'd just take a look at my system here. Now, I've been trying to manage my 12 volt the whole time, but as you notice, we're not turning the vehicles on once, so we just have to rely on 100% solar. Now, I've got a fair bit drawing from this system. I've got, of course, my fridge, I've got a little camera gear, but the cool news is, 16 amps at the moment. You're gonna be happy with that. With a quick feed into us, the tide is now in and it's time to launch the boat. How's this for convenience? This is better than half the ramps in Brisbane. My crabs now! This one's been soaking overnight. So, fingers crossed, it has a little crab, would be lovely. There's a whole coconut. How does that even get in there? No crabs, far out. There's been no luck with the crab pots. These muddies are really eluding us. So it's time to try and get the tinny into the next creek system. Sammy's dropped me back to the shore while he figures out if he can get through the river mouth and go down to the next system via the ocean. But it's not looking good. Yeah, I just sussed out this creek mouth. Uh, I reckon we're gonna have to go back on the trailer. It's pretty hectic out the front here. You literally have to leave, do a bar crossing and then try and get back in. So I think use that uh, Defender Can-Am and come grab us, I think. We'll try and drag it down. Yeah, well, I reckon just where I am at the moment, mate, it's probably the deepest spot, so let's try and get on the trailer here. Getting to know the waterways when in a remote area like this can be very tricky. We really don't want to risk doing a bar crossing here with the current conditions. Nah. After launching the boat with the Can-Am earlier, we opted to use it to recover the boat, but with a little bit more weight now and the sand soft as it is, we might need to bring in sooty. I wouldn't come to a place like this without a winch. So many times that if you get if you do get stuck and you can't extract the vehicle, you're gonna lose the vehicle with the tide. So just gonna use the runver to pull the Can-M and the boat and trailer out. Now the problem is it's really soft sand of course, but the steepness of the bank means the drawbars is going straight into the sand like a big plow anchor. With the Max Tracks reset and the winch hooked up, we should be out in no time. 
Right, come on, Suri. Keep the wheel straight, wheel straight, wheel straight. That's it. Little bit of left hand down, mate. Left hand down the steering wheel. That's it, that's it, come straight. With the boat back on the trailer, it's hooked up behind Sooty. We'll have to get to that creek system by towing it down the beach. But, of course, that's not going to be easy because the sand up here is so soft. And soon enough, Sooty's gotten bogged. We're just going down to some soft sand with Soot and the boat. This is a situation I don't want to be in. Stuck on a tidal beach with an incoming tide. First things first, we've got to get Sooty out of here. The day of recoveries. It should be a day of fishing, this one. <laughs> So I think the best way to make sure Sooty can get out of here on her own steam is to launch the boat straight from the beach here. Hang on. Going back tracks again. We're not even halfway through what is shaping up to be the most insane full driving and fishing adventure I've ever done. It's a bit of a process. But if it was easy, everyone would be doing this. Coming up next week on Full Wheel Drive 24-7, we attempt a crazy beach launch with a tinny on an incoming tide that'll risk Sooty going down. And what lays ahead is some fishing that not even we could have imagined. Unreal! Oh, it's massive! It's raw, it's wild, and completely uncharted. Oh, oh my goodness, this is not for the faint-hearted. But the bigger the adventure, the bigger the risk that things will go wrong. So the situation is we have zero food, not even a muesli bar. Now the pressure's on, we need to get a couple of fish for lunch. Oh no. Well, this didn't go to plan. Can Am is stuck. Do all the vehicles make it out? Well, you'll have to tune into part two of our adventure next week and see all the action unfold for yourself.